Welcome to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. Stay tuned to find out why Chicago's top realtors are choosing Dan Frio. Welcome to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. I, of course, am Dan Frio. And if you'd like to get in touch with me, please give me a call, 630-338-1160. You can find me on the web at 1160mortgage.com. Today, we're going to talk about, the caption of this is, you finally decided, I'm going to buy a house in 2019. So, what do you need to do? Well, unless you have cash, the only thing you can really do at this point is get approved and see how much money or how much of a house you can afford. How do you do that? Where do you look? Who do you look for? So I'm going to go over, I'm biased and I'll tell you why. I'm a mortgage broker. I have been a mortgage broker for 31 years. Why I choose to be a broker, I could work at a bank, I can work at a bigger mortgage entity. Um, I like being a broker and here there's multiple reasons why and why I would highly suggest you use a broker. Okay. So let's get, let's get started on this process of, I'm going to break it down into a a couple different things is your, what are your options? Okay. So let's say, for example, my best analogy of this is you want to buy a car but you really don't know what car you want. There's, do I want a SUV? Do I want a little car? Do I want a, you know, convertible? What kind? What? So if you go to the Honda dealership, you're going to find Hondas. I wonder if you don't want a Honda. Well, then you got to drive down the street and look at the Jeep dealership. Well, I, I'm not really sure I want a Jeep. wonder if I need a Chevy. Well, now you have to drive down to the Chevy dealership. Well, wonder if there's a way to do all of that in one big parking lot. Okay, so here's what I mean by all of this. If you go to Wells Fargo or Bank of America or Quicken or Guaranteed Rate, nothing bad about those companies, but they're going to have a set product base for you. So again, if you're going to Quicken, you're going to have the Quicken products. If you go to guaranteed rate, you're going to have the guaranteed rate products. Go to Wells Fargo, you got the Wells Fargo products. Well, wonder if, wonder if there's, a, there's something in there that doesn't fit what you need. No, too bad. You, there's nothing they can do for you if they don't have it. So if you go to a Honda dealership and you want to buy a Jeep, well, they might have a used one on the lot, but they can't help you. I want to be a broker. Why? I want to help you if you call me. So if you want, you know, if you need this program or that down payment program or how much money down, if it's out there, I can have access to it. I, I'm set up with over 20 different lenders or investors. And if you listen to my previous shows, lenders or investors are, they, we don't really use banks to go to get the money for mortgages. I am your mortgage consultant and I go out in the market and I find you a fit for what you're looking for. If it's, if, if I can't get you approved you probably are going to really have a tough time getting approved. So, however, if one of these other entities can get you approved, I know I can get you approved because I might even be set up with them or set up on them with them on the back end or through another entity or another source. So, let me get let me get back to back to all this. The I'm a broker and I the reason why I do it is I want to have all kind of different programs if you call. So, for example, if you're if you're looking for an FHA loan, FHA will do credit scores down to 500. Bet you didn't know that. They'll do well it, with a 500 credit score. You need 10% down. However, if you you're saying Dan, the I know the FHA program. It only requires three and a half percent down. Yes, but the minimum credit score for that is a 580. That is FHA's guidelines. However, if you have a 590 credit score. Call about five different places today and tell them you want an FHA loan with 3.5% down and I have a 580 credit score. I bet you over half of those companies turn you down because they, they'll say, ah, we require 600. You know what? We require 620. That, that, that's, they, they don't have what you need. So that's why I do what I do. 
I'm set up with over 20 different lenders slash investors because if the program exists, I got it. And that's why I do what I do. So the financing, I by going to a broker, we have avenues to all kind of different programs for you. Okay. The next thing is, is costs. What is this going to cost? My dad's 88 years old. I've been doing this for 31 years. He's still like, Dan, I, I, I still don't get it. Why do people not just go to the bank? Well, it's cheaper in most cases and almost all cases to go through a broker. And you got to watch the broker that you're dealing with because they might add in some different stuff that, you know, is just, or they're, they're, they might gouge you on rates. Uh, and that'll be it for another show. But in most cases, we have a better rate. Fees are much lower and more programs than your bank or the lenders, other lenders out there. So we're, we're basically a consultant on your behalf. Let's say you go to, I, I'll reference me as CarMax. You want, you don't know what you want. So you go to CarMax and there's everything out there. That's what I got. That's what I, we offer. So your financing point, I would highly suggest you reach out to me or a broker. If you you have a family member, friend, somebody in that avenue that, that is a broker, you know, get in touch with them. If not, if you're already in the process of a mortgage and you've got to prove through the, the online systems, the rockets, the, the, those things, please give me a call. Let's see if we can save you two, three, four thousand dollars with one phone call. I'll let you know. And if we do phenomenal, if we don't, God bless you. You tried, you made one phone call for 10 minutes. So that's the, the, the financing piece is again, go search out a good broker. Hopefully you, you give me a shot. And we help you with the financing. The financing options are, I won't say infinite, there's a ton. There's FHA, VA, USDA, there's grant programs, there's different terms, there's 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 all kind of things out there. There's different variations in credit scores, there's different incentives that go on uh on certain months. There's some months where you know the lenders are picking up the appraisal fees. That could save you five hundred bucks. Um there's a whole slew of of you know reasons why the financing is financing is your first stop without financing. And if you don't have the cash, you're not buying a house. So get, get pre-approved and get a thorough pre-approval. Don't just go online, get a one minute pre-approval because if you've never talked to anybody, that pre-approval is basically worthless and I'll be blunt. It's worthless. Reason being is, do you know exactly how to factor your income? Do you know exactly how much money you have in, you know, you're going to put down? The income is an area where most people, if you, I have an online system, go to 1160mortgage.com, top left, click apply now, and it's a 100% online secure system. As soon as you complete it, you're going to get a call from me. I'm not calling to pester you. I'm calling to validate the data that you put in, junk in, junk out. So if you put in bad information, that pre-approval is worthless. And probably nine times out of 10, when I go through an application with somebody, there's bad information in in there that would greatly affect that credit decision. Okay. So that's the part of the mortgage process that, you know, the mortgage is the biggest piece of that puzzle because without that, you can't, you can't go to the next step. All right. So now the next step is how are we going to find a house? So let me say this. You can kind of kick some tires around by going online to the Zillow's, Realtor.com's, things like that to find, you know, just kind of get, you know, gauge an area. But this is this is also an area where I'll, I'll say that I'll I'll go back to my uh, my uh, cell phone commercial where the guy asks, you know, how much would you be willing to pay for something that's free? And the little girl says, nothing, it's free. Okay. How about if you could have somebody work on your behalf to find you that ideal house and you don't have to pay them? When you're buying a home, you're not paying the realtor. The seller is paying all marketing fees and costs. So the se- it's coming out of the seller's funds to pay that realtor for selling the house. Use a realtor. And now I'm going to elaborate more on the realtor base. And I might... You know, upset some people, but it's not for the intent of upsetting them. But I'm just giving you my, I've done this 31 years. I'm trying to take you down a path to home ownership with the least amount of speed bumps and making sure we don't hit a brick wall at the end of this this road. Get somebody who does it full time. 
get somebody who has been doing it. Get somebody that can juggle, you know, some different clients. If you have somebody that just works part time, you know, maybe on the weekends, if they have more than one client, you might you're going to miss houses. If they are not aggressive in helping you try to find that house and they're not available at all times, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, also, you want experience, and it's hard. And I get when I got out of college, it was so hard finding my first job. But you got to. You know, but here's what I mean by that. You're going to have probably 50% of the times, there's going to be something that happens during this process that get, gives us a hiccup or, or we hit we hit a speed bump. We want a team that's working together that has experiences, you know, in in the business because of if there are issues that come up, that it, this isn't the first time that they ran into this problem. And they know how to maneuver around that system. You know, would you want to get on a cruise ship and it's it's the guy's first time, you know, driving a boat? Probably not. Uh, if you hit a storm, what's going to happen? He's never he's never even you know driven a boat, if you call it driving a boat. And now he hits a storm, he's freaking. So that's that part of it. So when we come back, I'm going to elaborate on. We're walking you through step by step by step on how and what you need to do to buy a house. And I'm going to try to address every pothole that you might face in, in circumstances you might face and kind of prep you for, you know, if this happens, then what? But if we put together a great game plan from the beginning, you know, things might arise. But it, uh, the, the process I'm trying to put together for you is to make you, get you from the start to the finish as easy and as simple and as stress-free as, stress as, stress as I can. So please come back. Don't turn the dial. I'll be back in two minutes. Welcome back to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. We are concluding our show, but we're going to be here for about 10, 15 minutes, on steps that you need to take or you should take to make a smooth transition from renting to buying to closing, moving into your house. So what we discussed before was, you know, the financing part. We went into great details with that. The realtor section. And now we want to go through, you know, things to look for or things to look out for or be precautionary about. Okay, so you applied for your loan. We pre-approved you and we came back and said, you're pre-approved. Well, there's some areas in that that might kind of give us some hiccups. And here's what those areas are. The biggest thing is I know I come back to you and say, okay, you're pre-approved for a $200,000 home. You have 3.5% down, and you budget for that property. You don't have a property yet. So what I have to do is I have to guess on two major numbers. Those two major numbers are your homeowner's insurance and your real estate taxes. Okay? So homeowner's insurance is pretty much in a pretty tight range. Well, it'll be between 80 and 120 dollars a month. That, that's most likely where you're going to be. So leaving us one unknown number, your real estate taxes. This is the major the number one area that could basically derail this process. okay? And here's what I mean. I will put in, let's say on a 200,000 dollar home, I'm going to estimate you have about $6,000 in real estate taxes. Okay. However, and that's how I do your pre-approval. I'm going to say it's $500 a month for your real estate taxes. Well, you find a house and you love this place. And when we do everything, we pull up the details and that real estate property or that house you like, the real estate taxes are $10,000. And this actually happened to me twice already this week. I now throw in that difference in your budget. And it just went from 6000 to 10000 That's $4,000 a year more. That's a little over $300 a month. Now you might not debt ratio. You might not, I'll, I'll put it in English. You might not budget to buy that house with that extra 300 plus payment for your real estate taxes. So, word of advice, 
when you're dealing with your mortgage company, do one of two things. One, get the maximum payment that you qualify for. And then we can always back in the, you know, the numbers from there. I would highly suggest uh, on my website, I have a phenomenal mortgage calculator and you can do it on your own. Go to 1160mortgage.com. It's on the right side of the page. On every page, there's a mortgage calculator. Plug in the details. It'll give it to you. Two, and I have a lot of clients do this, before you go out to see a property, send me the address. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up the most recent tax bill. What you want to be cautious of is why you might go to Zillow or Realtor.com or one of the other websites, and it'll give you a, a real estate tax number. Is it current? What kind of exemptions are there? And here's what I mean by that. I'll put that in better terms. Is that the most recent year's taxes? Is that, is that this year's taxes that you're looking at or two years ago? So I want to know exactly what the taxes are now, not what they were two, three years ago. So I'm going to go to the county's website of that address, and I'm going to pull up the actual current tax bill. Also, what I'm going to do is see if there are any exemptions that would reduce that tax bill. So here, here's some exemptions that I'm re- referencing. And this might be, you might not understand a word I'm saying right now. But let's say you go to buy this house and the taxes are, you're like, Dan, I found this $200,000 house. The taxes are phenomenal. They're only 2800 bucks. That doesn't seem realistic. I'm just being honest with you now. First thing I'm going to do is say, well, hold tight. So I'm going to go to the, the county's website and I'm going to pull the tax bill. What might have happened is, it might not have, but what might have happened is the person in there might be a senior citizen for years. They might have had a tax freeze five, six, seven years ago. So those real estate taxes, they're getting a senior discount. Plus, they're getting their taxes were froze five, six years ago. So now when you buy the property, you're not a senior. All those exemptions are going away. So your $2,800 in taxes might now be 6000 So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the houses around that area to see, because in most areas, houses are somewhat cookie cutter. They're not purely, 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 you know, built specific to that person. It's, it's, a, it's a neighborhood. They're, they're all, there's, there's some models in there that are the same. I'm going to try to pull up some of those to get what is your taxes going to be. And then we could base the numbers off of that. So those are areas where that, that, that's one big area. The tax, real estate taxes, is probably the biggest area that I get people stumped at. They're, they're, they love this house, and then we get to that point, and they're like, uh, and I'm, I come back and say, and I, I can't get you into that house. The taxes are too high. So that's, you know, the, the real estate taxes are a big issue. One more area is be, be leery or at least watch the association fees. So that's another area that I don't know. You haven't picked out a house, so I don't know the real estate taxes. And I don't know if, if and will there be association fees. So I pre, we pre-approve you for a $200,000 house with $100 in, in uh, homeowner's insurance in, that, in your budget, $500 in taxes in your budget, you, it works. But now you're like, Dan, there's a $300 association fee. I never knew that. We throw $300 in a month more, you might not qualify. So these are areas just to be... Just to watch out for, so when you, if if you're working with a a lender that you're comfortable with, that person is going to help you through this whole process. They're going to help get you pre-approved and make sure that pre-approval is solid. They're going to help you maybe work with a realtor. You guys might partner with a realtor that they, they have dealt with in the past who have, they've had a lot of success with, and they know this person does a phenomenal job. Now you have the realtor piece. Now, when you're, you know, when you're ready to go out and look at homes, the mortgage person, I do it every day. I'll run numbers and they'll, they'll, you, you could text me and say, Dan, I'm going to go look at the, you know, these two properties today. I'll run the numbers and get back to you and say, yep, that one will work. No, that number two won't work. Don't, don't go there. It, it doesn't work. So we're, I'm going to walk you through this process. Again, it can be, it's probably going to be the biggest, the most amount of money you ever spend in your life. The, one of the biggest steps you'll ever make in your life. 
And it, it, so it's stressful. Why are we going to add even more and more and more stress and uncertainty into this equation than needs to be? So another area that here's an area that frustrates me. And it, I, I'll have a closing every, every week I'll come across this issue. We get the appraisal. The, the house is supposed to close on Friday. The appraisal was done the week before. We get the appraisal on Monday. That's the last piece of the puzzle we need, and we get it. And there's mold in the basement. There's no gutters on the right side of the house, and there's leakage also in the basement where the mold is, and there's the, the railings going down the front steps are busted off. We're going to have an issue. And these are areas where your realtor plays a big role. Why didn't somebody advise us of all these issues? There's an appraiser, appraisal going to be done on that property to make sure the value is what we're paying for it. We don't want you to pay more on for a property than it's worth. And we want to make sure there's no issues of that house. You know, there's, there's mold. Well, you don't want to move into a house with mold. You don't want to move into a house that the front railings busted and the side gutters fell off the house. You're, I'm, I'm assuming you either missed it or you, your assumption was those things were going to be fixed. On the lending side, in most programs, you can't buy that house due to those issues. So if your realtor doesn't catch it, we're going to catch it at the end. Now it delayed everything. And the problem is that in, in most situations, it's a domino effect. You're selling your house and moving into this house. The house you're buying, they're selling it to you. They're buying another house. Those people are selling it to those people and they're buying another. It's a, it's a whole huge domino. So now we can't close in time on yours. So you can't sell to that other person. You can't buy. That person can't sell and buy. That person can't sell and buy. It's a huge domino effect. Now it comes back on me. Dan, what are you doing? Well, I'm just doing, I, if the appraisal would have came in, I'm, I'm golden. We're closing. Why didn't any of you guys who have been to the house three or four or five times, why didn't anybody address it? Either you didn't know because I'm assuming you didn't close your eyes. I'm assuming you, you realize that this, this is going to be an issue. So it should have been addressed at, at the beginning. So these are all what I'm trying to do is walk you from you're renting. Hey, you know what? I want to buy a house. What do I need to do? So I'm, I just walked you through the game plan. You want to get pre-approved. Give me a call. 630-338-1160 or 1160mortgage.com. Once you're pre-approved, we want to get you set up with a great realtor. I have a whole group of people that I'd love for you to deal with. And then we want to get you into that house with no issues. So I hope you like the show. If you do, please tune, tune in every night. Um, if you would, send me an email at dan, D-A-N dot Frio, F-R-I-O at gmail.com. Give me a phone call at 630-338-1160. Find me on the web the best, one of the best places I could highly suggest you go is go to YouTube and look up the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. I'd love to have you subscribe and, and visit that family. So thank you so much. God bless. Have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You've been listening to the Mortgage Update with Dan Frio. For over 10 years, Dan has been helping AM 1160 listeners. With so many companies to choose from and hundreds of loan options, the mortgage process can be confusing and costly. Be sure to listen each day for Dan and learn the difference between FHA, VA, and conventional loans. You'll also learn how to negotiate lower interest rates and fees, as well as steps to buying your first home and whether refinancing makes sense. 